My group had a lot of fun with the heist where the target was a batch of incredibly expensive security drones from a AA Corps road division. There were sub-objectives for getting different portions of them. The base contract was to get the schematics for them, but there was a major bonus for getting a working example. Another for getting the schematics working example of the control nexus they were using, yet another for wrecking their capability to make more of them, and finally a bonus for identifying and kidnapping the primary researchers. We had a sort of time factor going on too, the job came to us right as the drones were being moved from alpha to beta. If we went immediately the drones would all still be in the labs, if we waited a week or two they would be being demoed around the complex. At 3 weeks they would be replacing the defenses of the facility itself, and at 4 weeks they would start being sold and the contract would be void. The whole thing was wonderfully complex and had a pretty high number of characters and features involved, it felt a bit like a Hitman Blood Money level. I'd gladly play through it a few more times just to try new things. If there's any interest I'll elaborate on any of the aspects I can remember. Okay, as a quick forward it's been a few years since I played so my terminology might be a bit shaky, call out if anything doesn't make sense and I'll try to nail it down better. Setting notes this was pretty standard Shadoran, our escapades hadn't really messed with the world at a huge level so there's no real backstory shenanigans you need to know about. The Johnson and Meet Johnson was pretty high level, this was not a rookie mission, not the be all end all mind you, but not something that gets thrown to a bunch of untested runners. We were given a very high level summary when we were first offered the gig, and after the base parameters were laid down more details followed. We were given the target as well as some details, the list of objectives and what they were worth, and the timeline. The Johnson provided about 25% of the data our team used and a few suggestions. We speculated and the GM confirmed that the Johnson was from a Miltech AA that was big on manufacturing but weak on their own road, and wanted to cut corners by simply stealing tech schematics and going right to production. The target site our target was a AA Miltech Corporation. They had a fortified facility set near a medium sized mountain town which served as a live fire testing ground, and road facility. It was about as well defended as a AA facility can get, it employed fair sized group of security mages, a relatively small but very well armed guard force, and a fuck ton of drones. This was not an offensive force, but if it came to a fight within the perimeter you would be as deep in the meanest drones anyone could design they used their own latest drone designs for site defense in very short order. Objective and other details will follow in a bit. The objective was the culmination of years of drone research. A medium sized, variable force, magically resistant, AL controlled but nexus directed model. These things were, described as being an absolute bitch to hack killed the technomancer we hired as a backup hacker and smart enough to cause trouble. Think of house cat or smart dog that's armed and capable of wireless hacking and GPS tracking. The general theory was that these drones could outright replace everything on a security force except for the mages and spiders. While these drones were pretty clever on their own, they were controlled from a nexus that could either act autonomously or feed data and control directly to a spider. The real nasty part of this though, was that the drones could still operate without the nexus they'd fall back to default objectives or continue current operations and would try to reconnect to the nexus via any open net. Connections. This almost screwed us. So the Johnson wanted the schematics for these drones and their nexus at the minimum. But there were the following bonuses. Get a working drone get a working nexus identify and capture the lead researchers wreck the road production facility wreck the local server farm wreck the backup server farm steal anything shiny. That's not nailed down plant evidence linking to Raz. The timeline so what really made this fun was the openness of the whole thing. We had a lot to pick and choose from, but there was some serious risk reward and timing issues as well. The Johnson laid out that the drones were leaving their alpha stage and were entering a final beta stage where they would be run through live fire simulations in front of prospective buyers and be put into place as local facility defense. If we hit them earlier everything would be in one place albeit a very secure one. But waiting would give us time to get things ready and drones would be moved to less secure locations for demonstrations etc. Sorry I can't give you the exact numbers, but this was our team's 8th run. The way our GM ran it the heist could be done by a lower level group if they plan well and specialize in infiltration social or tactical or hacking. If you're going to be duking it out with the drones though you want to be seriously geared, since you are fighting the meanest drones the fluff and crunch can supply. Limits and options so this is where thing would vary for your own run. For us the timeline was set at week 1. Only one drone doing in lab testing. Schematics are located on isolated terminal and back up in the lab. 
Week 2 beta line of drones and a nexus is produced and put through a shakedown. Schematics are now on the main system and backup as well, as well as in the local memory of the production facility. Drones in Nexus are located in the production facility or the field, as well as the alpha version still in the lab. Week 3 drones are doing demos for buyers, multiple groups and Nexuses are in use, a larger group is being installed as perimeter security for the facility. Week 4 perimeter security has a full force of new drones, a buyer will leave with a batch of drones by the end of the week ending the mission if not intercepted. This gives a lot of options for when to hit, as for who, how and where, that's up to your grams. Hard points in our case the facility was protected by some serious tech scanners, there were doors that a digital recording device was not going through without some serious trickery. The perimeter was well protected by various drones, with magical and foot support. The fiber network was completely separated at several points, so a breach in the outer facility wouldn't get you access to the labs. Prospective buyers would be bringing their own security details. Data theft and personal abduction were a major threat to this corp, and protection was focused on these aspects. Now that I'm done pointing out how awesome this shit was, here's the easy parts we found and what we did about it. But I really recommend using some imagination if you do this yourself. It's not exactly a fun run if you make it only accessible via social infiltration or traceless hacking if your runners don't have a lot of those skills on hand. This is a fairly adaptable scenario, the key parts are the open nature, the concept of trying to steal an incredibly dangerous drone, and the time limits. Weak points the perimeter upgrade would leave some gaps as bugs were worked out that could be exploited. Some of the guards would lose their jobs to the drone upgrade, this did not make them happy. At least one tech and one researcher wanted extraction, but couldn't afford it. Labor was imported from the nearby town, especially catering and such. The pizza delivery gambit could actually be used. While the magical defense was fairly strong it wasn't perfect. This is a miltech company, not the inquisition. A clever mage could get himself or a spirit in. The fiber network was partitioned, but people like their Wi-Fi and mesh networks, and people charge their comms via data cables despite both being against the rules. The facility was built over an old Cold War era missile base. While the silos were capped, they were home to some nasty toxics and nuclears that no one who worked there knew about. There were other vulnerabilities but these were the ones we found and cared about. Our plan I like to think that our plan was pretty solid. It took a lot of discussion and we would have to infiltrate multiple times, but we were a sneaky team. We planned to infiltrate during week 2 and pull a copy of the schematics off the manufacturing machinery and store it on a chip that we would stash inside one of the drones being constructed. Then leave. Next week when the drones are on perimeter we would aggro that drone, then subdue it and leg it. So that was the plan. Our running team at this point consisted of 5 players at this point. The Magi Filtrator, the Sam Filtrator, the Hacker Rigger, the Heavy Weapons Guy, the Heavy Magics Guy. This is how things worked out. First infiltration during week 1 the hacker gets into the local pizza restaurant system. Then when week 2 rolls around and some pizza is ordered, the order is intercepted and edited then the pizza is delivered to the hacker. The hacker dresses as pizza guy and takes the pizza to the compound while the magi filtrator tags along invisible. The pizza is delivered to the front desk and an argument concerning the bill and the tip is started we tripled the order size. While they argue the magi filtrator walks past the distracted guards, gets out of line of sight and shifts into a squirrel. He then squirrels his way across the compound to the production facility and gets in through a window. He then gets a terminal password by watching a tech steals a USB drive, then downloads the schematics off local memory and crams the USB into a drone chassis that's on the construction line. He then squirrels back to the lobby, then chills until Sam Filtrator shows up claiming to be the pizza shop manager and apologizes for the behavior of hacker, and offers beer and pizza as a peace offering. Once again the Magi Filtrator walks past the distracted guards and exits along with Sam Filtrator. Great success. It was at this point that we realized that we had not marked the drone. So no shit, there we were with all the incredibly valuable schematics our team had sneakily downloaded sitting inside a vicious, intelligent, and unrecognizable murder drone. All we knew was its chassis color all the beta drone batches had bright unique colors so they could be easily sorted out. We couldn't tell our drone from the rest of its batch and we had no idea where this batch would be deployed on the perimeter or if it was going to be used for demos or what. So after some argument it was decided that the plan would be changed to capture an entire batch of drones. Which in turn led us to hiring on a decker and a technomancer to act as suppressors when we captured a bunch of angry murder bots. 
Our original capture plan had been to take a pochet at one, the go through a meter plane our portal and close it behind the drone as it chased. Now the plan was to find where our batch of drones was, find a way to aggro the whole batch at once, portal them into a hardened bunker, then hack them into submission before they noticed they were captured and self-destructed. We got our hardened bunker location, we got our hackers in place, we got our portal exit prepared, and we got heavies set up to suppress the drones while they were hacked. What we needed was to find our batch, distract the entire thing at once, and get our magic filtrator between the drones and the distraction. This was when heavy magic guy suggested freeing the toxic and nuclear spirits inside the capped silo. Almost done here, I swear. That would have made much more sense. It never occurred to us that the serials would mark production date. Well I suppose that our theory of grab all the yellow ones wasn't that much worse. And it did work out in the end. Second infiltration I will swear by anything you want that having good contacts is one of the most awesome things a runner can bring to the table. So even though it was his only serious contribution heavy weapons guy me pulled his weight on this run by calling up an entire lodge of toxic shamans. These guys thought the idea of unleashing a bunch of psychotic spirits was the funniest shit ever and wanted in in a big way. So instead of just one major filtrator the second infiltration included four incredibly unstealthy toxic shaman as well. Since Hacker and Sam Filtrator were already known to security it was Heavy Weapons Guy who rolled up to the compound entrance and delivered a basket full of puppies for his niece. To the security guard on duty while our Heavy Magic Guy threw a few low level spirits at the perimeter spirits to keep them busy. The guard who was one of the soon to be fired an S was bribed quite heavily to ensure that the puppies were delivered to the dormitories after the mandatory tech scan. But without the slightly less mandatory magical examination. Shortly after the puppies were left on an apartment doorstep to wait for the kids to get out of school, they turned into four naked shamans and the magic filtrator. Anyone who's fought a high level toxic shaman can tell you they're pretty unpleasant enemies. It's even worse when four of them show up at once near a high concentration of toxic spirits. The end results of this were quite grisly, and the DM made us feel pretty damn guilty about the whole thing later on, but damned if it didn't work. It turns out that toxic seating your family leads to a pretty immediate deployment of all available assets. So as everything went to shit the major filtrator got into position between the yellow drone group and the dormitories we got lucky and it was a demo group fairly close and popped his end of the portal up right in front of them and jumped in after. The heavy magic guy brought up the other end and threw up the illusion of a toxic spirit at the far end of the bunker. The drones went for it, and after they were through we closed things up and started nailing them with low damage suppressive fire and magic while the hackers went to work. This is where we found out how much of a bastard it was to hack the drones. The technomancer's head went off like a grenade off the bat. And by the time the third drone was down the decker we hired was out of it as well he lived. In the end we hacked four drones into submission, shot two of them into submission and the final two self-destructed. Luckily the schematics were on one of the hacked drones. We dumped everything into a hardened van. Had the hacker and heavies drive to the drop off while the infiltrators cleaned up the evidence we threw a nasty spirit at the guard we bribed as a sort of afterthought. In the end we got the primary reward, the bounty for 5 drones the wreckage of 4 counted for 1, the reward for wrecking the production facilities, and surprisingly the bounty for wiping the schematics, since apparently nuclear spirits do bad things to servers. The death toll was in the hundreds. Well that's it. Sorry for rambling on so long, I got really caught up in nostalgia there. If anyone has any technical questions relating to the run feel free to ask. This was a real high point in my gaming career, so I'm a little over enthusiastic. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> I know, no TD, Geppetto, or Darvish, but I really enjoyed this heist and I like, you know, I... I even though the heist didn't really revolve around the actual heist, it was more the plan and the preparation and all that stuff, but I don't know, I really enjoy the Shadowgun universe, and I want to kind of delve more into it, and like, you know, because I'm, I'm just really feeling it at the minute, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just really enjoying it. So, like, you know, I don't know, I just wanted to do a Shadowgun video that wasn't just what we're usually doing, I just wanted to do something a wee bit more, you know what I mean? I don't know. Like, you know, I... If you get the chance, like, you know, I'm, I know Shadowgun, it's a bit unusual, but, like, you know, and it's a bit different, but the movie Bright on Netflix, it's really worth a watch. Like, you know, I personally really enjoyed it. Like, you know, if you haven't checked it out already, check it out. I know a lot of people didn't really enjoy it that much, and, like, you know, whatever, but, like, you know, I thought it was really good. I'm like, you know, if you're enjoying this sort of magical near-future universe 
definitely something to go for if you get the chance but look as always guys i hope you guys have enjoyed um like you know click that wee notification bell to stay up to speed and like you know i hope to see you in any and all further videos see you bye if you haven't already check out my red bubble portfolio you might just find something you like this this is, is not okay this needs to stop now this is cancer this this is so much cancer that i can feel the tumors growing on my back and it's way down heavy on me and it's not okay can you help a nigga out and just stop this please